Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to another webinar on door knockers. We're so excited to have our master of door knockers, Kevin Robinson, area manager. We're so excited to have him once again to explain some best practices this time. Last time we talked to all of you, we, we talked more specifically about the app's function. We wanted to train you a little bit about the, the fact that it is available, that you can access additional leads in your area. But this time we kind of wanted to go over a little bit of the actual process of doing door knockers. And the reason we want to do this is because we've gotten some fantastic feedback from counselors out in the field on struggles that they've had doing door knockers, but also successes. So we want to talk about both those opportunities uh, with Kevin. So first, I want to go over a little bit of an agenda with you. Um, we are going to go over Kevin. Kevin's been doing really well the last few weeks. So we're basically going to talk through his schedule, understand a little bit exactly what he does to make sure that door knockers are incorporated into every single week um, that he is working out in the field. So that's going to be hopefully very helpful for everyone in scheduling. Um, we're going to separate that also um, into specific scenarios. Let's say you have an appointment that falls through. Um, what does Kevin do? to be able to fit some door knockers into that time slot. And then next after that, we're going to go over, let's say it's Monday and you know the next day on Tuesday, you've got the whole afternoon open. Um, how can you plan to go visit um, certain areas that you know you have some door knocker leads um, that you can visit? And then after that, we're, we're just going to, I'm going to basically play the role of being someone at home and uh, Kevin's going to knock on my door and I'm going to answer and we're going to go over his very quick but um, kind of chit chat if you will of the door knocker um, kind of approach and then after that we'll talk about his way of, of kind of closing um, talking a lot uh, about the final wishes organizer and getting people to really buy into that process and then um, to wrap things up we have some awesome questions from the field that we want to go over there's about six of them so we don't expect to take a lot of time with this, but we just want to add some a little bit additional um, training, some, some opportunity for you guys to um, pick Kevin's brain with those questions that you sent in and then um, hopefully get some, be able to use these new resources in your own approaches. So Kevin, let's toss it over to you. Um, let's start with, you know, how well you've been doing these last couple weeks. Um, it's uh, inspirational even. So, so kind of walk through, maybe even pull up the web portal, show us your, your schedule and tell us exactly how, how you've been doing things. Yeah, thanks, Justin. No, it's um, a little bit different the way uh, I, I look at my, my schedule now. I think all of us, either the night or week before, we'll look at our, our, our day and, and week and what we have available and, and what we're getting ready for, make sure we have enough you know, final wishes organizers and all of that. Uh, but I'll look specifically a little bit more into detail as to where I'm going. Uh, what area I'm going to be in, um, and if I've been in that area within the last few days, um, or I haven't been there in the last few days, sorry, I'll, I'll go over there and look in my door knocker app, uh, scroll over and look at what it is that I need to, to focus on and what doors I haven't knocked on. Um, really, I'll spend, if it's an afternoon and I'm finishing the day, uh, I'll only spend maybe half hour to 45 minutes every evening or every other evening just just doing a few door knockers. Uh, but if it's during the day, it's any time I have an open slot and opportunity. So I'll kind of show you guys my, my schedule um, for the last little bit. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Give me one second. Let's see if you guys can see that. Can you see that okay? Yep, looks okay. great. So with, with my schedule, this is an example of, of what my next week looks like. You know, with the Fourth of July being open, um, but on all the one, all these ones in yellow, these are these are all all door knockers. The people that I've I've you know gone to to knock on their door that uh, have set an appointment. Now I'll go back a week um, though, and you'll see I had a lot of no shows and a lot of cancellations. And so with my with my door knockers, um, this week for example was a door knocker, um, a door knocker, and these two are door knockers. So four of my five that actually came through were, were door knockers, where these ones are are people that I've I've talked to and and met with um, to to you know to set up the appointment. But I never go out more than more than two weeks. So when I'm doing my planning and looking at what I'm who I'm gonna be talking to, I'll go out a week or two and see what open slots I have before I go. 
Um, so I can go knock on the door and say, you know, I have these times available and only give them those options. Any further than that, they start forgetting again. And uh, it, it's harder to, to get back in the door. Um, so I think the first thing is, is knowing when you can set an appointment and know when you can go visit. Um, when, when looking at them, I know we already talked about this in the tips a little bit, but always make sure when you're looking at the door knocker to visit them at the best times, the best possible times. First, I never visit a green pin before or after 5.30, 4.30. Because before then, they're retired. They'll usually retire a little bit earlier. They're, they're done with the day around 4.35 or they'll go out to eat. And they're usually home in the morning till about 4.30. And then if they're a red pin, there's no point in going before 5.30 in the afternoon. Um, those are the people who are employed. And you need to give them a little bit of time to drive home. But if you hit them before then, most likely they're not going to be home. So one, knowing when to go and then when you can actually meet up with them again. So a lot of it is the you know plan before you go uh, as far as the door knockers go. Oh, this is great. I mean, <clears throat> gosh, I almost want to just congratulate you on those few weeks with all those door knocker appointments you set. You you really can see. I mean, if you if you learn the best practices to incorporate into your schedule, I mean, you can fill your entire week with uh, door knocker appointments. So that's great. Now let's let's move on specifically to the different scenarios where you can begin to incorporate um, door knocker leads, whether it's on the fly or it's in advance. So. Let's say an, an appointment you had fell through. Um, you know, you had something set for uh, a certain time. You've been there for 15 minutes at the funeral home or, you know, knocking on a door and they're just not there. What is your next step to be able to, to, to use some of those door knocker leads? Uh, good question. So the first thing that I do, of course, is if I went to my appointment and nobody was home, um, kind of similar to a door knocker, I will leave a little card or a little note with their name and information on being like, hey, you know what, I'm really sorry I missed you. Um, so that way, that one can potentially, you know, get, get of course, the, the connect again. But I will um, pull up the, the, my app right away, pull it up, see what, what I have in the area or the surrounding area, um, and start finding the ones depending on the time of day of who to visit. Of course, the same thing, green during the day, red in the afternoons, purple anytime. You know, purple they didn't specify, so I hit those anytime and every time. But another thing to look at is after you do the door knocker, I, I've heard from a few people that, you know, when you go and you've hit this house a few times, um, in the in the app, in the top corner, I'll kind of show you here, um, there's the notes section. Um, I always make sure to, to leave a note. And in the notes, let's see, I'll pull one up just out of random here, that uh, the time of day that I visited, um, the date and time of day, because if I've already visited them once at 3 in the afternoon and it's 3 in the afternoon right now, I'm not going to try them at 3 in the afternoon again because last time they weren't there and it just wasn't, wasn't successful. Um, so let's see. So, of course, you know, when, when you pull up the app right there, I don't know if you can see that, it'll have the, the person and their name. Um, after you select it, it'll have the top, top corner there will have the notes. So you just select those notes. Um, I don't know if you can see that. They'll yeah. have sort of the information that I went and knocked on the door and I left I left a, a door knocker and nobody answered. Um, now that one was at 3.30 in the afternoon of, about a month ago. So about a month ago, I'm okay to hit that one again. Um, but I'm going to hit it at like, say, 10.30 in the morning or 11.30. So kind of know when you're supposed to go, when, when you've already gone. Um, and then also, if you're already in the area, it doesn't hurt to do it even if it is the same time because you know, just because it didn't work yesterday doesn't mean it won't work today. So I think just more consistency with it is, is one of the keys too. So just, just quickly to go over, it, when you do fill in the notes section, which you could show us again just a little bit farther away from the, uh, from the camera there, but um, what, are, what are the specific things that you always put on every single note if someone isn't home? Is it, is it the time that you visited? Is it, what, I mean, what, what things do you try to fill in every single time? Okay. Um, so I'll show you this one right here. So this one was for a door knocker. Let's see if you can if you can read that. I'm not gonna be able to read it backwards, but That's you can kind of read it there and see that. So this was one that I visited. So the first time I visited was July 10th of 15. Um, so while I pulled up there, he had a plumber over and his plumbing had broken. So that gives us kind of a mode of conversation that 
you know, I was the guy that stopped by where you're getting your plumbing fixed. Um, and he wants to meet on Thursdays um, at 3.30, so I got a new updated phone number. So I put in these notes knowing, okay, first, you know, I, have a, I already have a, a, an in of conversation of what we saw last time, what we did last time. He's always home at around thir Thursdays at 3.30. Um, so my notes will have just the, the details of the date, when, the time, and then what I left behind. So we, we created at French, we created a little letter that – it goes over the final wishes organizer. Sorry we missed you. We wanted to get you that final wishes organizer um, with that information there. Now, sometimes I'll just leave a note that has my business card with a little handwritten note. Hey, Joe Jones, sorry I missed you, and then just leave that. Kind of leave them with the curiosity of why is someone from the funeral <laughs> leaving a note on my door. Um, one thing to always do is leave, your, leave their name on it and be – um, clear as to, to that it is just for them. You don't want them to think that you're just going at random doors, just putting something in every single door. But if it has their name specifically, they know, okay, this is for me. And it kind of sparks their interest a little more. Perfect. And <clears throat> I think one, one question too is, if an appointment does fall through, how much time do you allocate to door knockers? I mean, th there are lots of leads in there, so you could spend a lot of time. Is there, for instance, a, a distance that you wouldn't travel farther to, or do you try to stay, you know, I mean, do, do you plan for your next appointment? What What's going through your head in that aspect? Um, honestly, the time spent um, would probably be, you know, 30 minutes a day if it's after hours. Honestly, it's not, I don't spend a whole lot of time, 30 to 45 minutes after hours, so 5.30 on. Um, or if it's during the day, Anytime an appointment falls through, I mean, I have nothing better to do. I can either go set up CEPs or, or do other things like that, which are which are great as well. Um, but if I just have dead time, you know, my appointment's time set aside, I have three hours set aside for appointment. They didn't show up. Now I have three dead hours. So those three dead hours, yeah, turn them into two, three appointments. It's a win-win um, or a lose-win, I guess. But it would, it would give you that time depending on, on every week. So – if I have people show up, then I'll usually do a little less door knockers. But if I don't have them show up or I have an open time with no appointment, it goes up. But on average, I'd say I'm only spending four to five hours a week total on door knockers. Um, but it, it turns around. Okay. <clears throat> awesome. So now let's go over um, if uh, basically you have a gap in your schedule. Let's say an entire Tuesday afternoon. Um, and you want to kind of plan some door knocking <clears throat> into your schedule, um, walk us through that. You know, again, kind of maybe how much time would you spend? You know, how many miles would you would you try to stay within? I mean, what what's kind of your planning session there as you're looking into your next week or even just a day ahead to, to be able to do some door knockers? So if I'm going to be going out specifically and I'm planning the night before, okay, I have between two and, and four to do some door knocking tomorrow. I'll go into my into my web portal and look at my door knockers through the lead section. Um, and with those door knockers, I'll look at the most recent. Um, and if I can find a few that are in in the the you know general vicinity or a general area, then I'll go I'll go focus on that area. Uh, the nice thing about hitting newer ones or more recent ones is they're going to remember the survey a lot more than the older ones. So the newer they are, the more prone they are to be like, oh yeah yeah I remember that. Um, so I'll, I'll focus on that area on, in my planning session before there. And, you know, I'll pull up my, my app, um, scroll over to that general vicinity, pull my thumb down so it catches all the ones in that different area. Uh, whereas, you know, instead of just waiting until I get there to pull it up, I can plan ahead before, before time and be like, okay, in this area on the east side, and scroll over there, put my thumb down, hold it for three seconds. It'll pull up all the ones in that area. I have four retired and five employed. So I'll focus on those four retired since it's during the day. Just an example of it. Okay. Perfect. Well, I think I think that's kind of a, a good understanding. And, and, and from what you said, you can access these leads on the web portal. So if you are planning in advance, um, it might be more worth it to kind of go that route, seeing your calendar there too with the web portal, whereas the, the app can be more on the go, you know, if an appointment falls through, if you, you know, if, if, if you – want to spend some time, you know, in a specific area, you can, you can hold down for three seconds, drop the pin and you can see what's in that area. Okay, great. Well, that's great. I think, um, that solves a lot of issues with just people not necessarily understanding exactly the day to day of using the app. I mean, they, they understand now how to use it, but how do you 
utilize it? How do you kind of work that into your schedule and everything? Um, now, Kevin, let's go over let's go over your approach at the door. I know um, some people have been finding people at home, which is great. I think that's half the battle is basically picking the right leads to get them at home. But then, obviously, it's being able to set an appointment. So why don't you and I do a little role playing? Um, so you can uh, you can go ahead and knock on the door, and then uh, um, let's see your best knock there, Kevin. All right. Okay. And then I hey. Uh, how, how's it going? Can I can I help you? Yeah. Hey, is, is Justin home? I happen to be Justin. Yes. Hey, Justin. I'm Kevin Robinson from French Funeral Homes. Did I catch you at an okay time? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. What What can I help you with? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I was actually just in the neighborhood. I was actually going to help another family down the road here, and I, I wanted to stop by and tell you, Justin. I am so sorry. I haven't been able to stop by and see you yet. Uh, I know that you requested that Final Wishes Organizer in the mail. We sent you that survey a while back that you requested that Final Wishes Organizer. Do you remember that? Yeah, I, I think so. It's been a while, but I, I think, yeah, I think I remember that. Yeah, well, I, I wanted to let you know I'm so sorry we haven't been able to stop by and get it to you yet. I know we've had a huge response for people wanting to get these Final Wishes Organizers, and I, I wanted to make sure that I didn't forget you and, and got you yours, so I'm so sorry we haven't gotten to you yet. But... I do have an availability this next Thursday in the afternoon or Friday in the morning. Uh, which one of those works best for you? Um, I mean, I'm retired, so really I think either time would work. Maybe let's do the morning better, I think. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Justin, I, I, I'll put you down for Friday um, morning, and I'll make sure to bring that, that Final Wishes organizer for you. Now, just to remind me, Justin, do you remember, were you leaning more towards cremation or, or full body burial? Oh, I mean, I guess I haven't really thought about this in the last little bit. Um, you know, I mean, I, I've always thought cremation. My my wife thinks if it's not burial, then, you know, so so I don't know. I guess I'm kind of still no, so on both. Sure, sure about that, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll make sure to bring information on both when I when I do come, um, and I'll, I'll get everything all set for us. So I will see you Thursday or Friday at, at 9 in the morning. And Justin, just in case I'm running a little behind or something happens, can I get the best phone number to reach you on? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, my number is 503-888-8888. Uh, I know, it was a tough one to, to snap. <laughs> that was a good one to remember. Well, I'll leave you with my card, uh, Justin, and I'll see you Friday um, at 9 in the morning. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So, so really, my door knocker is very quick and, and to the point, I mean, that was maybe two minutes. Um, and there's a few reasons I ask and say the things that I do. Um, I always ask them if they have enough, if, if they're busy or I caught them at an okay time. 90% of the time, they'll always say no, and that's okay. But it's kind of the rule of whoever talks first loses. So when I ask them, you know, did I catch you at an okay time? No, no. But then I don't say anything. They go, but what's it about? They kind of get them peaked in the interest again. Um, and then you always want to make sure that your time is valued and as, as important as possible. If you just say, you know what, I, was, I had a bit of free time and I was out just talking to people that we haven't been able to talk to, you don't sound like you're very busy. And so lots of times you can get pulled into kind of doing a mini presentation or um, you know, they're, they're, the importance level of it kind of goes down. So always I'm, I'm on my way to visit another family or I just came from visiting another family in your neighborhood. Um, I used to say appointments or, or client. I was, I was talking to another client in your neighborhood, but it just loses that, that family feel and that good touch of, you know, I'm talking to families and I'm helping families in your neighborhood. I'm not serving clients. I'm not selling policies. I'm, I'm helping families in your neighborhood. Uh, so that's, that's another little thing that, that helped. Um, another thing is always focus on the final wishes organizer. Don't focus on the survey. I, I've learned that a lot of people forget the survey. But the reason they send in the service is because they're wanting that free Final Wishes Organizer. So they'll remember the Final Wishes Organizer a whole lot more than the survey. So if you say, hey, do you remember that survey I sent you? Most of them will say, I don't remember that. But do you remember requesting that Final Wishes Organizer? Or you requested a Final Wishes Organizer. I'll usually assume that they remember, even if they don't. So a while back, you sent in a request to get that Final Wishes Organizer, and I wanted to make sure I got it to you. Um, there's been a, a couple times in my door knockers that they did not remember the survey or the Final Wishes Organizer at all, 
but because I said they re they requested it, they're like, oh, okay, I must have requested it. And when I've actually come for the appointment, they're like, yeah, I'll be honest, I didn't remember either of those, but you know, here we are, and we ended up meeting and, and funding that appointment, which was great. Um, let's see, after after you get that, be very apologetic. Don't ever put the blame on them. Don't ever say, you know what, we've been trying to call you and haven't been able to get a hold of you, or you know, every time we've come by, you haven't been home. It's always it's always our fault. I'm so sorry I haven't been able to get here sooner. I'm so sorry we haven't been able to get that to you before, before now. Um, kind of read their expression. They'll most of the times after saying that they're like, oh no, don't worry about it. Oh, it's okay. So then they're law off of the defensive, and you're able to kind of talk them more on a, a friend level. Uh, don't go in the house. It lots of times turns into a mini presentation. And if they offered you like, well, I have time right now. Do you want to come in? I wouldn't come in because they're not prepared for it quite yet. Be like, you know, I'd love to, but I'm going to visit another family. Put that importance in your time again. Um, let's see. I always ask what they were interested in. Kind of get them thinking about it again. I feel like by asking that, they're thinking about it until you meet. So I'm going to meet him in two days. Justin and I talk. We're going to meet him on Friday at 9. But I asked him if he was interested in cremation or full-body burial because now he's thinking about it again. So now he and his wife are going to be talking about it. Hey, you know what? This guy Kevin showed up at the door, and he was – reminding me that we're going to plan for burial cremation. What are you wanting? To and they talk about it a little bit beforehand. So when you do meet, they're a little bit better prepared. Um, kind of as we go through our training with, with Eric, everything he always tells us is, you know, this isn't normal. This is, people don't just decide and wake up and be like, I'm going to plan my funeral. There's something that usually has happened that gets them to that point. And I feel like if you ask them what they're interested in, it kind of helps get them back to that a little bit. Um, and lastly, don't open it up to any old time. You know, I, I'm free any time. Well, I thought you said you're really busy and you haven't had a, you know, had a huge response to these. So I'll open up the times that I have available. Um, one of the things that really helps is I'll usually have a little pen and notepad in my pocket that will have um, the open times that I have and then a slot for their phone number. Um, afterwards, get their phone number in case something does happen. They have to call and cancel. or That way you don't have to go and do a door knocker again and be like, hey, I was in the neighborhood again. You know, get, get, their, get their information then. Um, and then be out, out quick. You're not, you're not there to present or sell them. Then right now, the whole purpose of the door knocker is not to present, is not to uh, stop and be there and sell them right then. The whole purpose of the door knocker is to get an appointment so that you can go and do a full presentation. Um, so focus on getting an appointment, not getting their phone number. Um, I've, I've, when I first started, I started doing that a whole bunch where I was, hey, you know, what? I was in the neighborhood and I tried to get their phone number, get their phone number, and then I was trying to call them again later to set up an appointment. While you have them in front of you, that's the time set an appointment. Anyway, so that's that's part of my presentation. Fantastic. Um, <clears throat> really, I mean, that was – thanks for breaking it down. I'll, I'll, I'll just go over it real quick again with you. But one of the big things, you know, be, be quick, be concise. Um, don't focus on the survey. I think that is a big issue when we had a lot of the responses that we got that came in. We're, specific, we're specifically mentioning people that um, – just didn't remember the survey, so they didn't really know where to go from there. So that's a good way to just to transition and, and remind them that they did actually request this. There's a reason you're here. You were requested to be here with the survey, with the uh, final wishes organizer. So that's fantastic. I also loved um, that you aren't just looking for a phone number. You you know kind of incorporated it very smoothly into just kind of you know creating the appointment, and you just said, "Hey, if I'm running late." You think I can get your phone number, and, and that way I can just contact you so you can know. Um, that's a fantastic way. Uh, any other way, really, the, the person's feeling like he's getting put on a list and he's going to, you know, I mean, that's that's just a really casual way way to um, to do that. And then, of course, just textbook, you you plant the seed, you get them thinking about burial cremation, and then um, and then that way they, uh, they won't just – also, when – Friday comes, the day we set, you know, he's he's been thinking about it the whole time rather than, oh, yeah, that appointment I set with you, it's going to be on his mind. So, okay, I mean, Evan, before we go into kind of our um, our Q&A, including some objections that that I'll propose to you, basically, um, is there anything else you'd like to add? Picture picture this as your your colleagues, obviously, that are, that are working hard to get to get better and um, to do door knockers more. Is there anything else you'd like to personally add with your kind of – um, door knocker approach. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe a little, a little bit of the tips or a little things that helped me. I know we went over a few of these last time on the last uh, door knocker webinar, but I, I never wear my jacket. I, you're a little professional in your jacket, and you take it off, and it's a little less 
funeral home sells many. So I'll usually go without a jacket. Um, keep your distance from the door. And uh, I'll always remember that this you're, you're intruding on their time. So, so always make it quick. Um, if you have a name badge that has the funeral home's name on it, I always wear that because they're almost automatically, as soon as they open the door, they'll look at the name badge and it kind of catches their attention right away. But it also lets them know that, you know, this is for real. Um, let's see. I will always, um, almost always leave my car running because if not, I mean, if they kind of hear it and see it, they know I'm, I'm pretty much in and out. I'm not, I'm not planning on spending my time there. Walking up to the door, I don't have anything in my hands. Because if I'm holding a Final Wishes organizer, I've had it happen before where they're like, oh, can I just have that one? And so I walk up, nothing in my hands, you know, talk to them um, as if you're just stopping by real quick to visit a friend. Uh, if you have stuff in your hands or your bag or anything like that, you look salesman-y, and they, that's the last thing you want to look like. Um, let's see. Yeah, other than that, I, not a whole lot I can think of. Um, if you do stay there more than three minutes, lots of times they'll ask questions that require you to give them a GPL. So if you lead the conversation right, you won't have to give them a GPL, which could lose out or hurt your sale later. Um, don't park in their driveway. Don't walk on their landscape. You know, just the, the basic, you know, general information. You always want to be courteous of their property and the place. Okay, perfect. Gosh, I, uh, I actually liked the uh, leave the car running. I thought that was a... It was a good idea, you know. Just it really makes it seem like you're busy, like you are visiting other people in the area, and um, that that kind of gives off the uh, the right impression that you're just there really quickly and that you'd love to meet another time. So, okay, well that pretty much wraps up our um, just the presentation section, planning, um, incorporating door knockers into your schedule. And now I'd like to ask some questions to you, Kevin, um, that people have sent to us, um, just kind of concerns, things that. Have tripped them up, or or just um, kind of things they like to you know figure out, get better at, and um, there there's some great questions. So I'm gonna pull them up here. Um, we're gonna start with one, and and this came from uh, Jake Vela. Um, he says, you know, I I just I'm still trying to figure out the best way to kind of move from you know we talked about. Um, you know, selling the final wishes organizer. So he mentions, I don't remember, you know, when people say, I don't even remember filling out that survey. So Kevin, you brushed on it a little bit. Um, but what, what do you think is, is the best way to just quickly move past that? I think that's a great question. That's one thing that I got a lot up front was, you know, I don't remember the survey. I don't know who you are. I don't remember sending this in. You have to remember, we're also dealing a lot with, you know, elderly where they might not remember it as much. Um, so I will always focus on, the reason they did it. Uh, lots of times you'll ask them point blank, you know, or tell them that they sent it in. Um, so kind of brushing over it again, always focus on the final wishes organizer, not on the survey. Uh, when I first started going, I used to always say, you know, do you remember that survey we sent to you? And there was most of the time, oh, I don't remember that. Um, but then I'll assume that they remember and say, you know, a while back you sent, sent in a survey requesting us to give you this final wish or bring you this final wishes organizer. You know, I want to make sure that I get you that final wishes organizer. Focus on the, the reason they, they sent it in or the what they're getting from it. Um, and if they don't remember, even if they don't remember it then, um, you can kind of take it back to the initial most some you. you know, most people don't think about this. And you can kind of get their reason for why they, why they might have sent it in in the first place. And it might bring them back to, you know, this is, this is the reason I might want something like this. Um, but that's in a very rare circumstance. Most of the times, it's you just assume that they wanted the final wishes organizer, and that's that's what you're going to get them, not the survey, the final wishes organizer. Perfect, excellent. I think that gives something to kind of um, work on and kind of understand that there are ways to kind of move past that and still and still keep their interest. Um, now, this is an interesting one. What what if what if the person answers the door and quickly just says, you know? Um, I didn't do that. It must have been my spouse. What you know, if, if the spouse filled out the survey, what what do you suggest to kind of um, get past that that issue? I think that's a great question, and that one's one that we get quite often when you knock on the door and it's just the spouse that, that answers, and uh, they don't remember it at all. So if you start going through your presentation, be like, yeah, I remember you requested this, and they're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. It can actually kill the opportunity to be able to actually meet with them later. So that's one when I always open, I introduce myself, but I'm asking for Justin. You know, is Justin home? If Justin is not home, 
Then I go, you know what? Justin actually asked me to stop by and get him the or get him a Final Wishes organizer. And you know, I wanted to make sure I got it to him. What time can I come by and see him? Or what's the best number I can reach him on? Uh, so I can make sure I get the thing he asked to to receive. So you focus on what he wanted and not setting an appointment right then. You focus on getting in front of the person who requested it to set the appointment. Now, if they know what you're talking about, of course you won't go through that. Um, but most of the time they won't know what's going on unless you know it's the person who wrote it. So always ask for the person who whose name is on it. Perfect. Okay. Um, another one that, that we got was specifically, um, I just, uh, let me, let me give some credit to who sent us these awesome, uh, questions and things, but, um, Jeff, Jeff Hogue brought, brought one up to that. That's really important. And it's just the fact that, you know, people sometimes will just say, I thought I was just getting something mailed to me. You know, I, I, I didn't necessarily want to do anything. I just wanted some information. What do you do about that, Kevin? So quite often I'll get people to say they just wanted it mailed to them. Um, and I'll say this final wishes organizer is served as an education piece. And we always want to make sure our families are helped to the best of our ability. So we have this final wishes organizer, but if we send them to people, lots of times it gets confusing because there's a lot of information and paperwork in there. And it's something that you can't do by yourself. Um, so by me coming, I help you fill out this final wishes organizer. So it is a complete plan for you. Uh, I, if they just want it in the mail, it's not going to do them any good. Uh, so I, I make sure to let them know, you know, really, if you get it in the mail, it won't help you. That's why I come and help families plan ahead with this final wishes organizer. Perfect. Um, another one just to kind of go along with that is um, we had we had someone mention that they've had a few instances where the person just said, you know what, I don't feel like I need that information right now. Like there's kind of a lack of urgency. They 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 may have filled out the the survey obviously to 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 get the to request the visit and the, the final wishes organizer, but there just seems to be a lack of urgency. They don't feel like they need the information. How do you feel like you could um, overcome that? So when someone says that you know that they're not needing it now or they're not needing it anymore, um, I kind of take it back to as Eric taught me. There's there's a reason they send it in in the first place. There's something that happened that made them want to have it then. So honestly, there's not a whole lot you can lose there because you're going to lose them anyway if you do nothing. So I'm very blunt or very open with them when I'm like, okay, well you sent in the survey requesting this in the first place. What what made you decide to send it in then? And trying to get them to remember why I did it in the first place. And if you can get them remembering the why, hopefully it'll give you the opportunity to explain why it's still important and it's still a big deal. Um, so kind of going back to the most summon you as well, but what's the reason? Why did you do this? Um, and once you get that reason, then you can focus on that as you're into this is still something that people need to do and, and that you should do to help your family because you wanted them to not have to sit in the funeral home on that day um, trying to figure things out. So trying to get their reason again as to why they did it in the first place. Okay. Fantastic. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then just to, to wrap things up, we, we have a few questions regarding the, the just one or two questions with the app and specifically if, if you're just not having a lot of luck with someone answering the door, we had someone ask, you know, I've, I've visited someone, a handful of times and in fact I'm pretty sure they've been home and they just don't want to answer the door for me Kevin what's kind of your process to kind of decide whether you should stop visiting a lead or if it's worth it to continue to to visit yeah if, if you're visiting a lead and you know they're home and they're just avoiding you you know it can also be more harm than good because then you're just you know spinning your wills burning your time um, visiting someone that might not be ready so I will always leave something behind to give them the opportunity to give me a call and be like, listen, I'm not interested. Or, you know, I noticed you keep coming back and leaving these things on my door. Um, I, I want to give them the opportunity to, to give me a call back. But if I know they're there and I've done it multiple times and, you know, they're just not, they're just not getting back to me. Those are ones that you can put, you know, put aside and, and notate and have the FPC help you switch them over so that you're not spending your wills going to the same place over and over. Um, there are a lot of people that are requesting and wanting it, so it's just time to, to focus on, on the ones that do. Uh, so there are going to be times that, you know, they, they're just not there yet. Okay, perfect. And then, so I know that um, 
Ben Wood had a question about specific those notes. He said he's been writing down a lot on pieces of paper, but I think really your best bet is just filling in that note section that's on the app. Um, Kevin showed that a few times. And again, if if you have if if any of you have questions specifically regarding app usage, like un understanding the ins and outs of the app, those can be directed either to me or to Peyton Thompson. Um, those kind of things, we can really just even get on a phone call with you and talk you through the app. We want to make sure that everyone really feels like they, they can use it anytime, anytime they need. And then another question that um, I think you had started to touch on, but I'd like to kind of make sure we totally understand it, um, is Josh Pearson put, you know, he, he had the issue that he, he didn't seem to be able to scroll out and see people in other areas. Mm -hmm. um, and then it always says that there's just none in that area as he's trying to figure things out. So I, I know there is an answer to this. Um, yep. And would you kind of explain how to how to work that? So I'll show you kind of on my phone. So in my area that I'm currently in, you'll get that message that say there's no leads in the current area. And so if I actually put my finger on the phone and hold it for three seconds, it'll drop a pin. So it's going to drop the pin and start thinking about it. And then it'll pull up the ones that if you look at where my pin is, it's only a block and a half away from here. So when it pulls it, it pulls it by zip code. So I placed my finger a block and a half away and it pulled up, you know, a couple door knockers that I can, I can go do. Um, so really if, if you're in an area, just cause it says there's no leads, try holding your finger around within a mile radius or so. Um, put your finger on, hold it for three seconds and it'll drop a purple pin and it'll look in that area. So you can go anywhere as far as a mile out. You can go out to 20 miles out, 30, 40, 50 miles out and just look in that area that you want to go to. Uh, so, uh, Really, it's it's just holding your finger down and, and deciding where you want to go from there. Perfect. All right, Kevin. Well, let's wrap it up with this, this last question, which I think is a fast, uh, fantastic way to end. Um, it's um, – let's see here. I know I want to just give credit to whoever asked um, for this this question. Um, oh. Let's see. Yeah, it's going to take me too long to find it. That's okay. Um, but basically someone asked specifically to you, Kevin, you know, what I think, I think it was Jesse, but he, he asked specifically, how many do you expect to get? Let's say you, you know, you visit five, five doors. How many do you expect to, for them to answer? And how many do you expect to get an appointment set up for them? Like what is your goal specifically for the, Door knocker guru Kevin Robinson, what do you shoot for? Because I know there's a lot of people out in the field who want to get to your level. They want to be able to use this this app. So, what exactly are your goals um, every single week? So, <laughs> door knocker gurus, that's, that's a stretch. But I, as far as as far as my doing them, if I have a high success rate, just like with anyone, it's exciting and it's fun. But if I'm just knocking and knocking and knocking, it gets a little discouraging. Um, but I've, I usually get out of five doors knocked, usually one to two that will answer. And out of those two, one to two that will actually set an appointment. Most people that will actually answer, I'd probably say maybe 75, 80% of the ones that actually answer end up being an appointment. So it's more so being there at the right time and finding them at the right time. So first, um, just kind of going over the pins again. I never hit a green one late in the afternoon. Always hit those ones during the day. And never, ever hit a red one before 5.30 or on a weekday. So if you hit the red ones after 5.30 or on a weekend, the retire, I mean the employed people are most likely gonna be home. So hitting those ones, it just, it just it's, it's a better use of your time. Um, so I will personally usually do you know, 10, 10 door knockers a week maybe. Um, out of those 10, I'll probably talk to five and set three or four appointments. Um, so that's, that's a pretty, a normal week for me, but it's not always that. And I think the biggest thing is a lot of these ones I've gone to two or three times and the first two or three times no one answered or I got their son or their spouse and and knowing when to go again and always updating those notes so that I know I went last time at three in the afternoon, I'm going to go this time at 10 in the morning, I'm going to go this next time at noon. And that, that really helps me have more success rate, success rate for ones that I've already visited. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is feel like you're beating a dead horse and just going over and over and over to the same place and not getting any results. Um, but if you do it the same same way every time, you're going to get usually the same results. Um, so focus on who you're going to and then also note and prepare yourself for when you have to visit them again. 
And, you know, just to follow up, I mean, in your experience, obviously doing a variety of different kinds of leads, you know, where, where they come from, have you felt like um, the leads from door knockers, that they're usually pretty good leads, as in if, if you set an appointment, you feel just as confident with any other um, lead source that you can um, basically fund those, those uh, policies and things? And I do. You know what, with these, you have to remember, one thing to remember with door knockers is these are people who sent in the direct mail piece. So not only did they do that, it's not only the same thing as if you had your direct mail piece sent in to the FPC and, F and them calling them, which are our most successful lead source, right? Direct mail. So these are all direct mail pieces. They just forgot to put one piece of information down usually, or you know they, they just haven't answered the phone. So they're already interested the same amount as a direct mail piece. Second, when you end with, you know, I can, I'm trying to remember what you're leaning more towards, cremation or full body burial, even though it says that on the survey, we already know the answer to that one. I ask that because they get thinking about it and they have a lot more uh, a better success rate in closing the first appointment because they've been thinking about it from when I talk to them to then. Uh, it's a little bit more when you're talking to them in person because I'm an actual person that brought up burial or cremation. And so it kind of becomes their thought process for the next couple days leading up to your appointment. Um, door knockers have, for me, just that awesome feeling of I took them from A to Z and it just feels, feels great personally. But... Uh, it's also easier because they've been thinking about it recently. Okay. Well, that about wraps up our um, webinar with Kevin Robinson about door knockers. Uh, Kevin, we'd like to thank you, obviously, for your just devotion to um, creating additional opportunities for yourself, getting you more appointments and more sales. We know that um, you have been a uh, just a, a huge resource for kind of this um, process that we're trying to um, offer the door knocker app specifically, but also just because you can access them on the web portal. And then there's also an online version for um, the door knocker app. We really want people to understand how valuable um, this is and really how successful you can be. Um, you know, and, and it'll go up and down. You'll get people home. You'll get people who um, forgot about the survey, but there are ways around that. There are ways to get people at home. So, Kevin. Thank you again for everything that you've done for us and also for this uh, tips and tricks webinar. We'll, uh, we'll I'm sure we'll uh, be using you in the future, but thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. All right. And to everyone else out there, thank you for listening. Um, we, as always, we are planning to do more of these. So please give us your feedback. Let us know exactly if this training was, was helpful to you. Um, you can send the, that feedback to P Thompson at Percoa.com. That's Peyton Thompson or myself. Um, Jay Ashby, jashby at percoa.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. We want to make these better. I don't know if you noticed, but we had some lower thirds in this one with our names and everything. So really up in our game here, but, um, let us know how you feel. So other than that, until next time, we'll see you later.